breathing treatments are used for various reasons in our neonatal population. Very similar to our adult patients, the medications that we use and the devices that we use to deliver these medications are based upon the situation. So essentially, bronchodilators for bronchospasm, if the patient has mucus issues, mucolytics, if we're hoping for anti-inflammation, then we know that we can use our corticosteroids for that or our other anti-inflammatories. And then if they have any special type of conditions or diseases, may it be cystic fibrosis, we know that there are particular medications solely geared for that. Uh, if they are a patient suspected of pneumocystis carini pneumonia, there's medications geared to that also along with special nebulizers. And then if the patient has RSV, then there's specific medications and methods in which we can deliver that particular medication. So the situations are still present even though we're dealing with neonatal patients. Now the ways that we administer these medications could be by blow-by method or we can actually use a mask. Very similar to the adult patients, as I zoom out and pan over, we have our nebulizer as well as the mask that we're so familiar with. I point out, notice that the patient or the nebulizer is actually attached to air. We can administer these nebulizer treatments with oxygen, but it would be important that we incorporate the use of a blender in order to do so. The way that we administer the blow-by method, as I pan to our patient, we would turn our flow meter on. Leader flow-wise, when you're administering these medications, the normal leader flow ranges between five to seven liters per minute for our neonatal patients. That's just so that we don't introduce a lot of turbulent flow to their already small airways. Babies do not like things on their face, so it's very hard to actually just place the mask on, on the face and expect the patient to receive all of their treatment. So that is why we use the blow-by method. And there are several ways that we can utilize the blow-by method. Uh, using the mask that you see there. Some facilities actually incorporate this little thing uh, that looks like a teddy bear. Uh, it actually helps us to administer aerosolized medication or uh, provide humidity or we can use our T-piece uh, that normally comes with the nebulizer setup. I will demonstrate how we would utilize each of the three. So turning on the flow meter it's about seven liters per minute Notice I have a good mist for my patient. And the blow-by method actually just involves time and patience for the clinician. So we just take our medication and we just hold it as close to the baby's mouth and nose as we possibly can. Now this may cause some of your patients to cry. Just remember that a cry is a long exhalation. And so therefore, your patient's not really going to benefit if they have this long cry. So the primary concern is to soothe the baby and to keep them from crying. We can do that by letting them just hold onto our finger, or we can just kind of stroke their chest and their abdomen. Do something to reassure them that everything is okay, so that they could benefit from this treatment. So this is the blow-by method using the mask. Demonstrating how we would use the blow-by me method with the teepee. You place it together and you occlude the end where the mouth mouthpiece would go. From that standpoint, we can use our teepee and just hold it in the general area of the mouth and nose so that we can provide the medicine through the blow-by method. Additionally, using our teddy bear here, 
We have an attachment on the back where we can just place our tubing. I turn this around and notice how the mist, the medication, actually comes out of the opening here. This is a clever tool that we can use, and we can place it as close to the baby as possible to their mouth and nose, like so, so that you can see that layering effect and the baby would actually receive their medication. Most babies are gonna have their heads turned either to the left or the right, so therefore, just make sure that you position the baby's head accordingly uh, if you use some type of assistance device. So those are the three methods that we can use with the blow-by method. Additionally, when we talk about aerosolized medications, we have our MDI and we have our aero chambers. Now from a historical standpoint, aero chambers could not be used because they have this one-way valve that's on the other side of that mouthpiece that would only open up when the patient takes in a breath. Well babies, from a physiologic standpoint, aren't strong enough to open up that one-way valve, so of course we use a spacer. Remember, spacers do not have the one-way valve. The method of delivery is still the same, so we would make sure our medication is mixed. We give a couple of actuations, and this one's empty apparently, but we would give a couple of actuations to clear the orifice of any debris, place it in the back side of our device, and then we would place it not in our patient's mouth, because as you can see it won't fit, but we would have some type of mask device and with this type of aero chambers actually geared towards kids so that when you take off the mask as you can see it is a spacer spacing device with the mask on we actually have this one-way valve on there but that is just to ensure that the patient receives all of their medication at the top of the mask we have another one-way valve that shows us if the patient's getting their medication or not because it only opens up while the patient's breathing in. So we would actuate our medicine like so and then the valve we would see it open and close, open and close as the patient breathes in. Now remember babies have a high respiratory rate so therefore they're not going to have that long pause or delay between actuations. In general, it's okay for the baby to have about six breaths uh, per one squirt of the medication. But that, that is how we will provide breathing treatments to our patients uh, in the NICU. Based upon the type of facility or medication that the patient um, is receiving, we may have to make certain adjustments uh, to the environment so that we can protect ourselves as well as the patient. Uh, that would include the use of mist tents or negative pressure rooms or some type of canopy type devices so that we try to minimize the amount of exposure uh, to certain medications.